Hi there. Today, we're going to talk about the imposter syndrome and how we might get away from it and eliminate some of our self-doubt. To start with, let's talk about maybe what are some of the symptoms so you know you have the imposter syndrome. And I know some of you are saying, what are you talking about? I know I have it. I don't feel like I'm good enough. I even know the name and it has a name. It's a thing, imposter syndrome. Well, that's great if that's how you feel. However, listen up because there may be some people who don't know and you may be surprised some of the symptoms of the imposter syndrome. Have you ever downplayed your achievements and said, oh no, that wasn't that great. I wonder why you were so insecure that you couldn't let the compliment land. We work excessively until we burn out. Why are we driving ourselves so hard? We focus on our failures rather than the accomplishments. That's right. We look at, yeah, I did that, but look how many times I failed. We avoid feedback. Maybe there's too much fragility and we're just so insecure that we don't want to hear what other people say. We turn down new opportunities because we're afraid, yeah, maybe we aren't going to be capable of that. And we have difficulty overcoming perfectionism and perfectionism is strongly linked to the imposter syndrome. So there are just some symptoms that tell us that maybe we have it. So what do we do about it? Well, I'm going to share three of my favorite things. The first one is just look self doubt in the eye. That's right. Have compassion, be honest, look it in the face and have a conversation and ask it some questions such as, I need more training. Do you feel like I need more training in imposter syndrome? Ask, maybe do you think that I need a team that values my contribution? Do I need a healthier work environment? Ask that imposter syndrome if, do I need a mentor? Do I need some communication skills? Do I need some training? Do I need to explore a whole new career? Have a conversation and see what the self-doubt tells you. It might give you a clue as to how to get out of it. Another one of my favorites is what I call the one-two punch. This is where you either hire a coach or a therapist or a coach and a therapist, and you work on strength-based psychology. Because strength-based psychology and strength-based performance is a ladder that can be lowered down into the pit of self-doubt and that pit of feeling like you're an imposter, and rung by rung, you can climb out of it because you can use your strengths. The brain doesn't change by changing the brain. You don't get neuroplasticity away from the imposter syndrome by changing your brain. You can change your brain through action. So if you have a coach who's action oriented or a therapist, and I will talk more about that in just a moment, who's action oriented and they're working with strength based performance measures, you can learn what you're good at and use that as a tool to get yourself out and change the neuroplasticity through behavior. Now, when I talk about a therapist, I might be thinking of somebody who does one-to-one, -one, the traditional thing that you know, or maybe there's a group, some kind of group meeting format. Another thing that you might want is a spiritual advisor that you feel like is a therapist for you. Here's another one of my favorites of how to get through the imposter syndrome. Have a PR journal. I have a PR journal. This journal has within it some of my personal records. And right now, I could feel that imposter syndrome because I've been pulled out of competitive sports because of a shoulder injury. And it's already been six months. And I may have another six months before I can go compete again. So I pull out my PR journal from the gym and I look back to when I took 18 months to do a double body deadlift. At the time I was weighing 115, 117, and I lifted 245 pounds. I was able to run up Beacon Hill and 46 minutes and a few seconds. That's fairly close for a person of my age to what they expect as the minimum for the Navy SEALs who come in from, uh, from the coast, from sea level to go up that mountain. I look at that and that gives me strength and that helps me know I'm not an imposter. I can get through this healing journey. So those are three of my favorite ways to get through it. And if you wanna find the link below, the link below will show you our free guide of other ways for you to get out of the imposter syndrome and a whole lot of other information research-based to help you understand it better. Now, if you are suffering from it, just know you're in really good company. Who do you think this is? She says, you feel like, especially if you've achieved success, that you will show up in rooms that you're not supposed to be in. You think that maybe somebody's going to discover, I shouldn't be here. Michelle Obama. 
This writer confessed after having written many successful books, putting about her 13th out there, she was like, oh, oh they're gonna find out now. I've just run my game and everybody's gonna find me out with this book. That's my Angelou. And then somebody that I really admire, she wonders why people watch her on the silver screen. And she said, if you succeeded, you've doubted yourself somewhere, somehow. Meryl Streep. Yes, if you have the imposter syndrome, you're in really good company. You don't have to stay in the imposter syndrome and be flooded with self-doubt. There's a way through it. Find the link to the free guide below. I hope that's useful. If this has been useful, go out to soulsalt.com, subscribe to our newsletter, or go out to YouTube, Soul Salt Coaching, all one word, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me today. Next week on Monday, I'll be doing one of my illustrated doodle journals on the difference between needs and wants. That happens on Monday. Come and join us. Take care.